Well, good morning, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. It is a little after 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time here on Wednesday, June the 4th, 2014, and we've got some severe weather to potentially deal with today. So I wanted to bring you a quick video update before I head out the door this, after, this uh, morning. Rather, a uh, long, long night tracking some storms. Uh, did get a little bit of sleep, but uh, not a whole lot. Uh, here's this giant mesoscale convective complex, this MCC I talked about in my video last night. Did not form a duratio, and uh, that's certainly a good thing, but it does have a couple of pretty heavy and intense lines with it. Here's radar over the past four hours, and you can see it did even have uh, some tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings as this line uh, moved in. But the first part of that line moved into central Indiana and will continue on. Another part of this line is uh, strengthening here. No, uh, no uh, warnings on it here at the moment, but uh, that's not to say that the things won't fire up. You can see it looks like a pretty intense uh, little line moving there if I just put it a uh, stop. Now, this is all moving to the southeast as well, so... Um, on a trajectory, this, uh, this portion of the line might just clip some of our southwestern counties, but uh, likely may head more this way if it stays on its current path. Lots of questions here today about what we will expect, so we'll take a look at all of our options here in just a second. Today's video update is sponsored by Metal Magic in Washington. You can give Chad a call at 698-8555 for all of your paintless dent repair needs. And of course, tell them Southern Indiana weather sent you. We are expecting potentially some hail today, along with damaging winds and isolated tornadoes. So you may need that number, right? Jot that down, okay? All right, let's go to the Storm Prediction Center website first. Let's go ahead and talk about our chances. Uh, still under a slight risk for severe weather today. Uh, they have decided not to go with a moderate risk. And really, the rain that we're going to see potentially out of this first wave moving in this morning that's got some limiting factors to it and uh, really more the cloud cover even if we don't get the rain uh, out of it so will that help to stabilize or keep our atmosphere in check time will tell on that it might it might not but the reality is um, too many questions to up it to a moderate risk in their thinking so they have upped it to a slight risk let's go ahead and take a look at the t of the uh, parameters you can see, remember the 30% is an upper end slight, and you can see that the uh, wind uh, risks here, the upper end slight does come right along our, our, our Ohio River counties, basically. Uh, so this would include the Evansville metro area, probably go as far north here as maybe into uh, Du Bois and Crawford County before it jets up the Ohio River here and goes up to uh, VV right around in there. Goes down in here. Uh, the hatched area is the 10% is the uh, significant risk area, which is a 10% or greater probability of wind gusts uh, 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point, as you can see down here in the definition. So, right now they're thinking that the strongest wind threat will be in Kentucky, and I'll show you on future radar why that's the case in a minute, and we'll see whether that pans out or not. Hail probabilities, 30% uh, as well, upper end slight uh, for at least a good portion of us, the rest of us in the slight risk. And tornado parameters, 2% and 5%, so not off the charts by any means. They were actually seeing 10% uh, out here yesterday whenever they had that big outbreak. So um, that's the way sort of things stand for this afternoon. Let me go back down in here into this, and I want to take off... Uh, the watches, the warnings, I'll even take off the radar. Let me start by going into the high resolution NAM and showing you uh, what's going to go on with this. I need to turn on model fill. Here we go. Okay. All right. So I want to show you what's uh, going to take place. Let's go back to about right now. This is what the models are saying. This is what the high resolution NAM thinks it should look like right about now. Let me turn on the radar to show you that it's actually a little bit further along than what the high resolution NAM says. High res NAM doesn't have anything up here, and it's, this is a little bit more intense than what the NAM was predicting. Otherwise, gives you the general idea of it. But we'll keep that in mind that it's already wrong. But uh, nonetheless, we'll we'll show what it says. No model is perfect, especially with these kind of setups. They regularly get it wrong. Notice the high res NAM. This line that's out here to our west, it wants to basically just absolutely destroy that. I'm not convinced that will happen. It keeps us pretty much rain-free here within southern Indiana. I'm also not convinced that will happen. We'll have to see whether that does or not. If it does, though, by the afternoon hours, here's what our thinking is currently. You can see by the afternoon hours here by about 7 p.m., here's a fairly intense squall line starting to form over the area, and then you see it grows stronger as it pushes to the south. Okay, That's what the high-res NAM is saying at this point. Let me take you into the HER model, which oftentimes I like, frankly, just quite a lot better. Uh, than some of the others. Um, I think this one has the full extent. Yes, it does. Okay. 
Uh, let me go here first. Let me go forward to 11. Let's go to 12Z because that's almost where we are at. And let me turn back on the radar. And you can see as I overlay the radar over it, the HER model is doing a little bit better job. Now the HER doesn't have this little extension on the tail down here, but at least it gets the positioning mostly right. Uh, it may have the, a little bit more intense than some of the collaring is, but you know at least it gets the positioning of it right. It's handling it better. Let's show you how this moves in as it goes on throughout the morning. Here is um, here's 9 a.m. Here's 10 a.m. And you notice we are starting to get some of that rain move over southern Indiana here. Um, 11, 12, finally here's 1. So it does clear out this afternoon. But it looks like we do have some rain potentially to deal with this morning if the HER model is to be believed. And then here is uh, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and finally 6 o'clock. So you can see it doesn't really organize it into a line for us with the high res model. It actually just takes it as individual cells. If that's the case with our environment, we'll have to watch out and see whether that does anything or not. There's a lot of opportunities here to uh, be wrong. So anyway, that's the way two different future radars look, two completely different looks to them. Reality is the parameters are there today. The wind energy is there. I think the instability will be there. It's just a matter of how high the instability will be. We, we're already going to have instability whether we have cloud cover or not. Uh, with this particular setup. Now, it's not always the case, but it is today. So it's only going to be a matter of whether the instability is kept a little bit more reasonable or whether it, it skyrockets up. Um, but we got wind energy today in plenteous amounts, and uh, we're going to have instability there, at least in some fashion. We're going to have storms fire. It's only a question of how fast they go severe, whether it goes severe for us or whether that uh, takes weather before they go into Kentucky to congeal more into a line. So uh, we'll keep here watching. That's about all we can say at this point. We are under a slight risk for severe weather. And, you know, basically today, folks, all modes of severe weather are possible. If you get these individual cells like the HER model wants to put out, uh, then tornadoes would be a little bit more of a threat here. But if they congeal into a line, then damaging straight line winds would become more of a threat. So uh, certainly damaging winds 60, 70 miles per hour or greater are certainly possible today. A few isolated tornadoes cannot be ruled out as well. And then, of course, large hail is a possibility as well. If we can get the instability to ramp up, if we can clear out, as the HER model likes to think, if we can get this precipitation shield to uh, largely leave us, and if I get to the right one here, if we can get this precipitation shield to go through and then largely leave us and give a few hours this afternoon of a break before we start to see anything, then certainly we could uh, see some large hail out of that. But it's something we're just going to have to see at this point. All right, folks, go to southernindianaweather.com and we'll take a look at your seven-day outlook. You can also pull it up on your mobile app as well. If you haven't downloaded our mobile app, you can go to iTunes and search for Southern IN Weather, abbreviate the state of Indiana there to be able to find it because of title uh, size restrictions there on iTunes. And, of course, under the Android market, you can go to, uh, on Google Play, uh, folks, just uh, go to uh, search for Southern Indiana Weather, and you'll be able to find that app. Links are also here on our homepage. All right. 85 is what I'm predicting today. Sun mixed with clouds. Chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms early in the morning. And, again, that accounts for what potentially will move our way. A break probable in the midday hours with numerous thunderstorms expected Wednesday evening. Again, I do think severe thunderstorms are likely for many of us in the area. I think we're going to see a few warnings this afternoon. Hope I'm wrong on that. Hopefully it'll all fizzle out, but it uh, doesn't look like it at this point. So um, we'll see how it goes from there. But hey, look at this. So Thursday and Friday look nice. Nice break after this cold front finally moves through. Temperatures in the mid-70s on Thursday, upper 70s on Friday. You can't beat that this time of the year. Even low 80s on Saturday with only a very isolated storm chance. So not too bad. And then, hey, it only warms up to 84 as the rest of the extended outlook goes for your highest day. So not bad. 82 is our high expected high temperature normally this time of the year. So kind of a normal pattern. But uh, at least after today, we've got a little bit of a break to deal with on the rain. All right, folks, we will cut it off there for this video update. I will keep you up to date with the latest on Facebook and Twitter today. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great day, folks. Stay safe.